Hi guys, welcome. So this video is mainly for those people who are writing mains in a couple of days. Amongst them, I know a few who are tired and exhausted because of the answer writing sessions they have been doing in the last couple of months. I know a few people who are anxious and nervous because they'll be writing the mains for the very first time. But I know a lot of them who are having self-doubts at this point of time. They are feeling that will they be able to perform better? They are feeling that will I be able to complete the paper in time? Now, these feelings are common and these feelings are okay. Okay, everyone is feeling the same and you are one amongst them. So you don't have to feel that you are not prepared and hence you're having this feeling. Don't have that feeling that there is a, a separate breed of toppers who are feeling differently. There is nothing like that. Everyone feels the same and you and everyone will have equal chance to emerge as a topper. But how you handle yourself from henceforth matters a lot. And hence we are making this video to make it easier on you and to make sure that I don't miss out on any points. I have divided this video into six parts. And through the six parts, I'll try to address the do's and don'ts that you have to uh, take care of in the mains exam. So let us look at the six parts now. So the six parts are first, what you do and what you don't do a day before the exam. Second, on the day of the exam. Third, the three hours while writing the exam. Fourth, the break between two exams. Fifth, the night before the next exam. And finally, the break between the GS papers and the optionals. So the first one, the do's and don'ts on the day before the exam. The first mistake that we usually make is having too many targets on the day before the exam. We want to finish GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 and in the evening we want to start essay revision. So don't do this. This is a common mistake in that excitement we, we stretch our targets and keep ideal goals and that ends up becoming stress at the end of the day. So I would advise you people to not have so many targets. It is always better to have the entire day for your essay. Essay will not only help you prepare joyfully, but it will also have a calming effect on you. Because have you heard anyone telling I couldn't finish essay? It is not always, uh, you know, it is always very good to keep essay uh, dedicated to the entire day. Make sure that you dwell on different topics in essay, different themes in essay. See if you can generate different ideas, different anecdotes, examples. And just make sure that you stay in that particular essay, the realms of essay the entire day. Okay. The next is make sure that you get everything ready in the first half of the day. That is you get your pens, your alt ticket, your instruction sheet, your watch, your water bottle, everything should be ready in the first half of the day because don't push it to the end moment because there are chances that you may miss it out. There are chances that you that may stress. Okay, that may give you more stress because you're not able to find this or that. So getting it done in the first half of the day will at least give you that surety that this work is done. So that will give you the mental space to be more calm. It is always better to do things that will give you more calm and it will put your mind at rest. Okay. And the third thing what I want you to do is positive affirmations. Usually what happens one day before the exam is negativity keeps creeping in and you keep feeling that I have not done enough. Will I be able to perform properly? Will I emerge as a topper? All these things starts coming to your mind. Don't let your mind wander. Just tell your mind that you are the best. You have done your best. Execution is the key now. Studies are not. Okay. How well you will handle yourself will decide how you will perform in the exam. How you will perform in the exam decides your future course of actions. So make sure that you handle yourself well on the day before the exam. On the second part of do's and don'ts is on the day of the exam. On the day of the exam, please make sure that you reach the exam center at least 30 minutes prior to the scheduled time. Please don't be an hero. Don't try to be very adventurous. Make sure that you reach 30 minutes prior. The second is don't try to get into arguments with the auto rickshaws or the cab wallas. Please make sure that give whatever money they ask you and make sure that you get to the point where you want to be. Okay. And if prior arrangements can be made on travel, that is even well and good because it keeps your mind at ease. The next is once you reach the center, you will see your friends. So don't get into the chit chatting mode and trying to make your mind wander into unnecessary things. It's good. You have a small talk, but then come back to the zone and stay in that zone. All right. Make sure that you know what you're getting into. You know what paper you're going to be writing in a few minutes. Okay. Keep your mind focused. All right. So this is what you have to do once you reach the center. Be calm and be focused. The third part of do's and don'ts is handling the three hours while writing the exam. The first thing is when you enter the exam, you see your neighbors, you see all the other students sitting. Don't start assuming that they are better than you. They write better answers than you. They are better prepared than you. 
okay if such thing starts coming to your mind again bring positive affirmations you are the best you have done your best and study is no more important execution is the key okay so you are on par with everyone when it comes to studies but who will execute better is the winner so make sure that you focus purely on the execution part next while the writing starts two things must always be kept in mind the first is time management make sure that you are managing time better so to manage time better the best trick is to always go back to the time after every question okay this is very advisable to go back to the question to make sure that you have not breached in case you have breached on a particular question make sure that you make up on the successive questions so that you come back on track this is very important please don't make sure that you keep lagging so that in the final uh, half an hour you have to rush five to six questions at a time don't do that mistake so time management is the key the second is content management now content management has two parts the first part is your attitude you may come across a lot of questions which you may have not studied or in those areas where you may feel that you are not superior okay in those cases your mind should never tell that i don't know the answer to this question your mind should always tell that i will manage this question okay you should always tell that if i don't know then no one knows and if i am not able to manage the answer no one else will manage the answer that attitude itself will reflect or translate into you writing a better answer than you think you can all right so please make sure that your attitude matters the next is your mindset your mindset is what happens sometimes is when you write a question when you write an answer to the question and let us say that your expectations of that answer was very high and it did not come out properly you will start thinking that the question did not go properly hence the paper also will not go properly hence i will not get an interview call hence you will miss the final list also so you have judged yourself on the basis of one question the entire exam this happens in the exam so don't let your mind wander this way always make sure that you remain in that question and that question only once that question is over go to the next question forget everything about the question that is over now your entire focus should be on that particular question this should always be the case so time management is important content management is important in content management make sure that you remain with the proper attitude that you can manage any questions that comes your way and the second is your mindset that you will only be focused on that particular question at that moment the fourth part of do's and don'ts is during a break between two exams once you come out of the exam all please make sure that you relax for a few minutes make sure that you close your eyes do your breathing exercises and most importantly be appreciative of the fact that you did the exam paper well all right that appreciation will spill over as a positive effect in your next paper so please make sure that you are grateful for it and you have done it all right the second is make sure that you have healthy food and you make sure that you drink healthy the third part is the most important aspect during the break please don't do any post mortem analysis i do understand the temptations that you want to know how your friends have performed how what is their take on the difficulty of the paper and so on but please make sure that these temptations are sidelined you don't fall to these temptations and be very serious in your preparation see at the end of the day what is done is done discussing about is about that is of no use it will just have a negative effect on you because whatever they say you may feel that you have underperformed and that may have an effect on the next successive papers so it will always be better to discuss it once all the papers are done post mortem analysis should never be done from your first paper until the last paper whatever is done is done focus on the next thing for this in order to make sure you don't fall into this vicious trap i'll give you a mantra always make sure that you use this mantra whenever you face any difficulty or distraction the mantra is very simple one question at a time one paper at a time one day at a time that is how your mind should follow okay whenever you are writing within the 3 hours your mindset should always be this question once it's done you will go to the next question you will not think about the previous question whenever whenever that paper is done that paper is over you will focus on the next paper one paper at a time you will not think about the previous paper once the day is done you will go to the next day you will not think about the previous day this has to be your mindset in the entire mains exam tenure all right finally during the breaks as much as possible please don't keep any phones with you that is very tempting and no social media and no telegram even if there's a phone with you okay please make sure don't fall into these temptations the fifth part is the night before the next exam okay so here the first and foremost thing again is your temptations towards post mortem analysis tell yourself it is no use doing that analysis so please make sure that you focus on what is next remember the mantra the second thing is rest 
make sure that you give enough time for your body to recuperate from all the writing and sitting that you have done. Please make sure that your body is re-energized so that you go back to the exam all with the same energy that you went in the first day. This is very, very important because a sound body means only then the sound, the mind is sound. Okay. So if your mind has to work at full capacity, give your body a proper nourishment. All right. The third aspect is try to not spend as much time on the phone. If you want, you can revise calmly a little bit or you can watch some, uh, you know, comedy shows or uh, some movie clips. Make sure, make sure that execution is the key. Make sure whatever you do, that will always have a positive effect on the execution. This is important. The sixth part of do's and don'ts is the break between your GS papers and your optionals. Okay. Now, mainly this is the time when most of the aspirants may let the guard down thinking that the exam is almost over. They have done their best and it is just optionals and you are very strong at it. Please don't fall to this trap. Make sure that you are focused. The exam is still not over. Tell yourself whenever you are getting distracted that if you don't score well in your optionals, there is no point of your GS score. You will not make the final list. The optional plays a very crucial role. So keep reminding yourself the importance of your optional that will not allow your mind to wander and hence you'll take those time for your break very seriously. Now, should you rest or not rest? Make sure after you are done with your ethics paper, you go back home, you take rest, you eat nicely and make sure that you sleep, you get a good night's sleep. And the next few days, it should be very serious that your optional must be prepared thoroughly. Now, ideally, we would advise you to make sure that you have to revise your optional at least three times. Three readings of your optional will actually give you confidence and your answers will be more specific compared to others. Okay. As you know, optionals require depth of knowledge. So the depth can be reflected with more number of revisions and with more number of revisions, your specificity in your answer increases. So please make sure that you are not wasting the time then. All right. The next thing I want to emphasize here is language papers. People who are not that strong in the language papers, don't keep one day at the end, a day before the language paper to study the entire day on that language. That is a wrong strategy. Please, please make sure that at least every day, two to three hours on the basis of your competency in that language, make sure you dedicate that much amount of time every day to uh, you know, prepare on that language paper. The reason is this will give you that mental comfort that you are preparing gradually and that will give you the confidence. If you put it at the end day, you are always anxious whether you will perform well or not on that particular day. What if you are not able to complete the entire language paper syllabus within that particular day? So every two to three hours every day in that break would actually be a very good advice for the language papers. Okay. The third thing I want you to do is please don't again fall into that postmortem analysis. If you are getting into that postmortem analysis, it will have a negative rub off on your optional performance. Because then you will start thinking, I, would, I should have written the case study like this. I should have uh, put this diagram in paper one. I did not do the international relations properly. The moment you start doing this, you will start judging yourself. And that will actually always have a negative effect on your optionals. Always be appreciative of yourself that you have finished all the four papers. You have done the best you could. And please focus on the next goal that you have. Make sure that you are fully focused until the five days of your break. You are fully prepared with three rounds of revisions, with the language paper done and you go to the optionals and please make sure that you ace it and you will ace it if you follow all these instructions. Okay guys, I hope the session was helpful. I hope I have covered all the points. I would like to end the video with the words of Rudyard Kipling who says, if you fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. So the unforgiving minute is the three hours that you'll be writing on every exam. The distance run is the efforts that you'll be putting on every question. And if you make it worth it on every question, the success is yours. Please make sure that you're focused, you're calm. Insights team wishes all of you a very best of luck. Personally, it is just another exam. So enjoy it, endure it and rock it guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.